so I suppose it's either have no children or have lots and lots of kids. Personally, I'd pick the no children option if it were my choice. 143. If I have children and subsequently grandchildren, I will keep my three-year-old granddaughter near me at all times. When the hero enters to kill me, I will ask him to first explain to her why it is necessary to kill her beloved grandpa. <laughs> when the hero launches into an explanation of morality way over her head, that will be her cue to pull the lever and send him into the pit of crocodiles. <laughs> After all, small children like crocodiles almost as much as evil overlords, and it's important to spend quality time with the grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> that is just being an evil douche at that point, but then again, you are the evil overlord. <laughs> <laughs> 144. If one of my daughters actually manages to win the hero and openly defies me, I will congratulate her on her choice, declare a national holiday to celebrate the wedding, and proclaim the hero my heir. This will probably be enough to break up the relationship. If not, at least I am assured that no hero will attack my legions of terror when they are holding a parade in his honor. <laughs> it would also probably confuse the fuck out of the hero. <laughs> 145. 145. I will order my gods to stand in a line when they shoot at the hero so he cannot duck and have them accidentally shoot each other. Also, I will order some I will also order some to aim above, below, and to the side so he cannot jump out of the way. <laughs> yes, yes. You know what? Why don't people normally do that in, you know, shooting at, a, at one person? Stormtrooper kind of, storm, storm Syndrome. Kind of a no-brainer, really. 146. My dungeon cell decor will not feature exposed pipes. While they, may add, while they add to the gloomy atmosphere, they are good conductors of vibrations, and a lot of prisoners know Morse code. <laughs> 147. If my surveillance reports any unmanned or seemingly innocent ships found... Where they're not supposed to be, they will be immediately vaporized instead of brought in for salvage. Hmm. The Trojans could have used that kind, that role. Damn you horses! 148. I will classify my lieutenants in three categories. Untrusted, trusted, and completely trusted. Promotion to the third category will be awarded posthumously. <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course you can completely trust them. They're dead. 149. What? Before ridiculing my enemies for wasting time on a device to stop me that couldn't have possibly work, I'll first acquire a copy of the schematics and make sure that, in fact, it couldn't possibly work. <laughs> 150. Ropes supporting various fixtures will not be tied next to open windows or staircases, and chandeliers will be hung way on top of, way at the top of the ceiling. <sighs> yeah, that's a pretty good idea, actually. 151. I will provide funding and research to develop tactical and strategic weapons covering a full range of needs, so my choices are not limited to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with swords and blow up the planet. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually really, really smart. Or just, well, really, really obvious. 152. I will not set up myself as a god. That perilous position is reserved for my trusted lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> One fifty three, I will instruct my fashion designer that when it comes to accessorizing, second chance body armor goes well with every outfit. Yeah. The bulletproof yeah. vest is usually a good fashion accessory when you're trying to stay alive. I would also add a footnote about about asymmetry, but you know, that's a personal choice. One fifty four. My legions of terror will be an equal opportunity. And my, my my legions of oh oh. Want me to, oh, leave, want me to read it? I'm sorry that that grammar kind of threw me off. My, my legions, legions of, of terror, terror will be an equal, equal opportunity, opportunity employer. employer. 
Conversely, when it is prophesied that no man can defeat me, I will keep in mind the increasing number of non-traditional gender roles. Macbeth. <laughs> 155. I will instruct my legions of terror in proper search tech. Hello? You cut out. Ugh, the fuck you button again. I'll read it. 155. No. I will instruct my legions of terror in proper search techniques. In particular, if they are searching for escapees and someone shouts, Quick! They went that way! They must first ascertain the identity of this helpful informant before dashing off in hot pursuit. Hmm. Although, yeah. eh, I suppose. Hmm. Well, that's why you invent radio, so you send one person, just one person to go after that direction and have the other people a a ascertain the identity of that person. Just, or... in, just in case he is telling the truth and you want to go after him. Yeah, yeah, that's a smart thing to do. 156. If I know of any heroes in the land, I will not, under any circumstances, kill their mentors, teachers, and or best friends. You kill the hero first, and then his mentors, teachers, and best friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is not to invoke feelings of vengeance. Alright, 157. If I have the hero and his party trapped, I will not wait until my super weapon charges to finish them off if more conventional means are available. Yeah, pretty much. 158. Whenever, plan whenever plans are drawn up that include a timetable, I'll post-date the completion three days after it's actually scheduled to occur and not worry too much if they get stolen. Because we always must attack on the day the plans are supposed to be finished. <laughs> so, basically, uh, the Death Star 2 plan. Yeah. 159. I will exchange the labels on my folder of top secret plans and my folder of family recipes. Imagine the hero surprise when he goes to some plans and finds the children's program with potato salad. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they took my idea earlier. <laughs> 160. If I burst into Rebel headquarters and find it deserted except for an odd blinking device, I will not walk up and investigate. I'll run like hell. Uh. Yeah. 160. Just to, just, to just to be safe. <laughs> 161. Before being accepted into my legions of terror, Potential recruits will have to pass peripheral vision and hearing tests and be able to recognize the sound of a pebble thrown to distract them. Every movie in the prequels. <laughs> 162. I will occasionally vary my daily routine and not live my life in a rut. For example, I will not always take a swig of wine or ring a giant gong before finishing off my enemy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess our evil overlord is a David, a Henry David Thoreau theorist. Hmm. 163. If I steal something very important to the hero, I will not put it on public display. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a good idea. 164. Well when planning an expedition, I will choose a route for my forces that does not go through a thick, leafy terrain conveniently located near the rebel camp. <laughs> Uh, if you were required to go that direction, you don't go yourself. You send your trusted lieutenant instead. <laughs> 165. I will hire one hopelessly stupid and incompetent lieutenant, but make sure that he is full of misinformation when I send him to capture the hero. Yeah. <laughs> As an equal opportunity employer, this is 166 now, I will have several hearing-impaired bodyguards. That way, if I wish to speak confidentially with, some, with someone, I'll just turn my back so the guards can't read my lips, instead of sending all of them out of the room. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's, that's just being anal at that point. <laughs> 167. If the rebels manage to trick me... I'll make a note of what they did so that I do not keep falling for the same trick over and over again. Uh, yeah. Like, One, uh. like, like the bridge that collapses out from under, from under you for the tenth time. 
168. If I'm recruiting to find someone to run my computer systems and my choice is between